Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video. Now today I will be doing a removal of a hard drive from a 15 inch PowerBook G4 in particular. This is one of the aluminium models. I'm not going to be showing you how to do it on a titanium model. I do have a titanium model, but I can't really demonstrate on that because it doesn't have any screws in it. So all you've got to do is pull on it and it falls apart anyway, but that is for a different day. Today, we will be taking the hard drive out of this. Now, this is one of the two destroyed power books I got. Well, I didn't buy them as destroyed, but they ended up being destroyed. As you can see, it's in pretty bad condition. And this is actually the American keyboard one, which I got, and we will be taking the hard drive out of this today. It has a factory fresh version of Leopard on it. I know that because when I turned this on, I saw the intro video. So we need to take this hard drive out and put it into the 10 pound power book, which I got, which I couldn't get to boot. I think the hard drive in that is dead. So that plans to take the hard drive out of this put it into that one and then we can see if I can get that machine working. We won't be doing all that today in this video. I'll just be taking the hard drive out of here. So if you would like to see the video of me trying to get that £10 power book to boot, please do subscribe and stick around because that should be happening within the coming weeks. I should also say this is not a tutorial. I'm not going to brand it as a tutorial. This is just documenting me doing it for myself, but if you want to follow along, I'm sure you can and you will be able to get a successful result. So without talking for too long, let's just start with this thing. So the first thing we need to do is take the battery out. That's pretty simple. That's something you've pretty much got to do whenever you do anything on a computer. But we also need to do it on this because there are screws underneath the battery, which we need to get. You meant to use a coin or something to open that, but I just use the end of my nail. They're quite long at the moment. So that was just Fine. We also then need to take the RAM door off. You just need a really small Phillips screwdriver for this. Later on, we will need a Torx T6, so I do have that here. You can also do with a spudger just to pull the casing apart, but it's already coming apart, so I think just by using brute force, I will be able to get into it. So let's just take off the RAM door. Whenever I'm doing any unscrewing, I will just speed it up so this doesn't take too long. And there we are, the RAM door is now off. Now in this particular machine, we've only currently got one stick of RAM, but that does not matter. We don't need to touch the RAM today. We just need to take the door off to get to those two screws, which are in there. So the first thing we're going to do now the door is off is take out those two screws, which are in there. So we can just use the little Phillips screwdriver again for this and just take those out. I'm guessing these screws, yeah, they're quite long. These must connect somehow to the top case. So I am going to have to try and keep all these screws separate, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. This machine is a mess anyway. So if I lose a screw or two, or don't know where to put them back, I don't really think that is too much of a big deal. Now that those two are out, let's take the two out of the battery area. Well, I was going to say that, it looks like they're already missing. So I'm guessing someone has been inside this machine at some point. I did not know that, but those two battery area screws are missing. So I'll have to remember that I've not lost the screws. They were already missing. So now that I know those are out, we can take out the four screws along the top of the the bottom of the machine. Yet again, this is a job for the little Phillips screwdriver. There we are, those four screws are now out. Now we can take the screws off from both sides. There are three on each side. They just go along the side where the ports are, one, two, three. This is on both sides, so now let's just take those out yet again little Phillips screwdriver. This is back when Apple used to use more standard screws on their products instead of everything being security bits. Now, so let's now just take out all the screws from both of these sides. There should be six in total. Okay, and now they are out. We can go to the back of the machine to where the hinge is and we need to take out 
these four screws, two on each side. Now, not all of these screws are the same. One on each side is a different length to the other. I'm not exactly sure which is which, so let's now find out. I will start by unscrewing the bottom one, and by the bottom one, I mean the bottom one for when the machine is laying down on its front. So there's the lid facing down. That's what I'm referring to as the bottom. So that one is that length. Now let's take a look at the top one to see which is the longer one or which one is the shorter one. So let's just see. Okay, so they both look the same length to me. I thought they were meant to be different. Let's see if the ones on the other side are different. Okay, so I'm not too sure why I thought they were different. I'm sure the video I watched once said that they were different, but on this particular one, they're all the same, maybe on a different model. They are different, but on this particular mm -hmm. one, all four of these screws do appear to be the same. So now what we can do is open up the machine. There we go, and there are two screws one at the top up there and one at the other side. We now need to take those out and this time we need to use our Torx bit. This is a T6 as I have already said so let's just go ahead and unscrew those and keep those screws separate because they are different screws to the rest. So let's just take those out. There we go. They are now out and we should now be able to just pull up on the top casing. All right, so since this bit's already coming apart, let's just try and pull up on here. You should really be using a pry tool or something, but I should just be able to pull up on it. There we go. If we lift that up, you can see there are two cables connected down there. On some machines, there is only one, but on this one, there is two. Now. I don't think I actually have to disconnect these cables to do what I want to do. You can if you want, but I think I'm just going to hold the top case up like this because I can't really be bothered disconnecting these. So here is the drive down here. We need to take out the drive, of course, and someone has definitely been in here before. The orangey yellow tape, which usually covers the connector, has been ripped off at some point. Now what we need to do is unplug the connector Again, you should use your spudger really, but I can just pull up now that connector is off. We need to take off the bar from down the side. There are two screws on this bar. We are back to our Phillips screwdriver now. So let's just unscrew these. There we go, they are now out. We now need to pull up on that bar. There's no easy way to do it, but there we are, that is now out. One of the screws has just fallen inside the computer. There we go, that is now out and we should now be able to just pull out the drive. So let's just pull up and there we go. That is the drive out. So here is the drive. This is a Fujitsu drive and it looks to be an Apple original 80 gigabytes and there is an Apple sticker on there. Now, if you are going to be replacing the drive with a new one, you will have to take the screws off the side as well as the plastic and put that on your new drive. But I'm not going to do that because I will be putting this straight in another power box. I will just leave this as it is. So I'll now just close up this computer, put in as many of the screws as I can, and then I will conclude that video because that is all you need to do to get to the drive. Hey, everything is back together and that took longer than I anticipated. Why? Well, the whole machine is of course slightly bent from its ordeal in the postal surface, so trying to push everything into shape to manage to get the screws in is actually quite difficult. But every screw which came with this machine is now back in and you wouldn't know that I've taken the drive out. Every screw is back in where it came from. I managed to remember which ones went to where and everything is now as it should be. So I can go put this back on my shelf and whether I put this drive back in in the future or not, I'm really not too sure. If I can make this drive work in the other power book, I'll probably just keep it in there because that power book is in a lot better condition 
than this one, so there wouldn't really be any point putting this back in here because realistically, I'm not really going to use this machine. It's just too far gone. So I'm guessing this drive will probably now live in the £10 power book if I can get it to work in there. So if you would like to know whether this does work in there, please do stick around for a future video, as in that video, we'll be finding out whether I can get that computer to boot, and hopefully it will be able to boot using this drive. So that will now be it for this video. I think I have covered everything. I've shown how to get the hard drive out of this thing, and now hopefully I can go give a different computer a new lease of life with this drive. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully this was interesting in some way, and maybe if you wanted to take the drive out of your power book, you now could thanks to this video. So thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next video, which may or may not be more power book stuff. So thank you, and I will see you then. Goodbye.